Is the Moto G7 Play a good phone to buy? Well, in this video, we're going to find out. Follow me on Instagram at KevinBreezeTV. Please join the Kevin Breeze tech community on Facebook to chat about budget smartphones, ask questions, and help others. Hi everyone, this is Kevin here, and welcome to my Moto G7 Play review. Now I've had this phone for almost three months now, and I've definitely spent a lot of time using it. I've also compared it to a lot of other devices on the channel here, so make sure to check that out as well. Now this version of the phone is the Moto G7 Play with Alexa. Now this device is factory unlocked and is an Amazon exclusive, so if you want to get this in its current form, you're going to have to go to Amazon for that. Now I will be leaving a link in the video description, so make sure to check that out. Now in addition to being available on Amazon, you can also get this phone from different carriers. I know that Metro by T-Mobile, for example, recently started carrying it. And if you want to get this device through Metro, then you'll definitely be able to save a lot of money as they often offer various deals. I know that right now they're offering a port in deal where you can actually get this phone for free if you transfer into Metro by T-Mobile. So you're gonna have to go to your local Metro by T-Mobile retail store to learn more about that. Now, one of my favorite ways of getting phones is getting phones that are factory unlocked, which is what is for sale on Amazon. Now, what's great though about the factory unlocked Moto G7 Play is that it features support for all four major US carriers. So this phone is gonna work with AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, and Sprint, and also Cricket, Metro by T-Mobile, Boost, all those other smaller carriers that are derived from the four major carriers. So that's great because if you want to jump from carrier to carrier, or if you're not sure what your future is gonna be with your mobile carrier, then this is the ideal way to go because you don't have to get a new phone just because you're switching carriers. Now, like I said, this is $179.99. It's definitely possible that the price has gone down since this phone was initially launched. So definitely take a look at the link in the video description to learn more about it. Now, this device features a 5.7 inch display coming in at 720p. And the display itself has a 19 by nine aspect ratio with a 294 PPI. Now up top here, we do have a notch and the notch is pretty thick. It's pretty similar to the notch on the iPhone XS, for example. And I really wish that it had a smaller teardrop notch, similar to the design of the Galaxy A20, for example, which I actually just compared this phone to this phone. So check that out as well. But it does have a pretty thick notch on the top here, and because of that, there's not a whole lot of space for your various notification icons. So I do wish that notch was smaller. And then further down below, we have a chin here, and it's a pretty thick chin, and actually has enough space for the Motorola word mark. So overall, this device doesn't necessarily have the most appealing form factor and design, but it's also not a terrible design either. And the good news is that even though this display is 720p, it still looks really good. It's still really crisp and clear. And most people wouldn't even be able to tell that this is a 720p display compared to a 1080p display because of how clear it looks. Motorola did a nice job designing the display for this device. Now in that notch on the top, we have an eight megapixel front facing camera. And later on in the video, I have photo and video samples from this phone. We also get a front facing flash. So if you take a lot of selfies in the dark, then that front facing flash will probably come in handy. The device features 32 gigabytes of storage with micro SD card expansion. So you can expand the storage on here if you want. There is no wireless charging with this phone, but it does feature a fingerprint sensor on the back. So we'll try that out right now. So that fingerprint sensor was really quick, and that's a great thing to see. We also get face unlock with this phone, so if you don't want to use the fingerprint sensor, or if you want to do face unlock in addition to the fingerprint sensor, then you can go ahead and set that up. Now we have a single 13 megapixel camera on the back side of the phone, and it does take very decent photos, especially for a phone in this price range, but you're not getting portrait mode, unfortunately. The cool thing though, is that this phone can actually take video at 4K at 30 frames per second, which is almost unheard of for a phone in this price range. Now, the device features two gigabytes of RAM, which is a bit of a disappointment, but one of the really cool things about this phone is that it features the Qualcomm Snapdragon 632 processor, which is actually a pretty high-end processor for a phone in this price range. So combining that really good processor with two gigabytes of RAM actually will give you pretty good performance. On top of that, Moto gives you some really good software optimization with the G7 Play, 
So performance with this phone isn't bad at all. Now the phone features a 3000 milliamp hour internal battery with fast charging, and it runs Android 9 Pie. Probably noticed already that this phone does feature quite a bit of Amazon bloatware, and that's because this phone is the Moto G7 Play with Alexa. Now also on Amazon, they have a non-Alexa version of the phone, but if you're really into Amazon's various services, then you might actually like this. We have Amazon Alexa built in, so if you use that a lot, then it's right there. Of course, you have Google Assistant as well, so you can use that. So you have multiple options here for your various voice assistants. We also get Amazon Shopping, Amazon Music, Amazon Photos, Audible, so a whole bunch of Amazon goodies pre-installed here on the phone. But other than that, you don't really get any bloatware at all. Now that we've gone over the specifications of this phone, let's talk a bit more about the hardware. So I already talked quite a bit about the front here, with that 720p display at 5.7 inches, the 294 ppi, the large notch on the top, and the large chin on the bottom. Now on the left side, all we have is the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card. Then on the right side, we have the volume button and we have the power button. Then on the top of the phone, we have the noise canceling microphone and the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. I do wish that 3.5 millimeter jack was on the bottom of the phone though, because that's typically where I prefer it to be placed. We also have the microphone here and the USB-C port for charging and data transfer. Now on the back side of the phone, we have kind of a cheap looking and feeling plastic material. It's not too bad and what's nice is that it doesn't absorb too many fingerprints, but it is still kind of cheap looking. We have the camera module, we have the flash, we have the fingerprint sensor, and that's about it. Play with the 19 by nine aspect ratio and the A5 Pro is a 1080p display with a 19 half by 9 aspect ratio. Now, if you're really into watching YouTube videos or even Netflix, you're definitely going to like this phone. It actually has very good speakers, so it can get pretty loud and the speakers are nice and clear. So you'll definitely get a nice video watching experience with the device. Now, thanks to that wonderful Qualcomm Snapdragon 632 processor, you are going to get really good performance when browsing the web, for example. You're going to get really good scrolling with the phone as it's nice and smooth. So that's one of my favorite things about that processor is that it really does give you quite a bit of power. You'll have no problem playing basic games like Temple Run on this phone. You'll also have no problem playing games like Candy Crush. Now for games like PUBG, this phone will be able to handle it, especially with that nice Qualcomm Snapdragon 632. But since this phone only has two gigs of RAM, it is gonna hinder the performance on some games like PUBG. I've been very happy with the photo and video quality from the Moto G7 Play. It's actually been a really good surprise with this phone. It takes nice and clear photos that really do look pretty fantastic. And the colors are really good too. The focus is really nice as well. And it also takes really great looking videos. So I really don't have any complaints about it. It does a good job taking nice looking selfies. And for this price range, it's about what you'd expect. Of course, you're not gonna win any photography awards and it doesn't measure up to flagship phones like the Galaxy S10, LG G8, or iPhone XS, but still, you're gonna get good looking pictures with this device, and if you're wanting a camera that takes usable, good looking photos, then you're definitely gonna be happy with the Moto G7 Play. Hi everyone, this is Kevin here, coming at you with a test video from the Moto G7 Play. This is in 1080p. They also have a 4K option, which I'm gonna try out next. Now we do get pretty quick autofocus in video mode, which is a really cool thing to see with this phone. Let's do a close up of this bark. Very cool, very fast autofocus here. So overall, it looks like the video is pretty decent, especially considering that this is a lower end budget phone. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. Hi everyone, this is Kevin here doing a front facing video test from the Moto G7 Play. So let me know what you think of the quality from this device. But this is with the front facing camera on the phone. So let me know what you think. Hi everyone, this is Kevin here coming at you with a 4K video from the Moto G7 Play. This is at 30 frames per second. And it's actually pretty surprising that 4K even works with a device in this price range. So really cool to see that that's available. But let me know what you think of the actual quality from it. 
I already did a 1080p test and I'm pretty sure for this review video I am going to have to downgrade it to 1080p just because I typically don't upload my videos in 4K. But having this be originally filmed in 4K should give it better video quality than just filming it in 1080p because downsampling usually makes the video look better. But let me know what you think. The phone records very good looking videos. I am very surprised to see that it does have 4K video recording. And yeah, I have nothing bad to say about the video quality from this device. Here's the box that the Moto G7 Play comes in. And then there's not a whole lot included in the box. We get of course the typical literature, but we get a wall adapter here, which is a fast charging wall adapter. And we get the SIM card removal tool. So I've been very happy with the Moto G7 Play. I am going to be parting ways with it pretty soon because I'm going to make room for new devices to cover on the channel, but I do like it a lot. I think it is a good deal. Of course, this range of smartphones is very competitive because we have other devices that are new to the market, such as the Galaxy A20, which is a great phone from Samsung. We also have the other Moto G7 devices like the Moto G7 Power and the regular G7, which are very close in price range as well. So you do get a lot of different options. But standing on its own, this phone is a good device and you'll be very happy with it if you decide to buy it. Now definitely take a look at the link in the video description to see the most up-to-date pricing for the phone. Make sure to like this video if you liked it and I will see you in the next video.